Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this rig into the comp video, we're going to be discussing and analyzing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with Intel, specifically confirmation that the 9000 series of Intel Core processors is actually real. So this is not because of a press event. In fact, it's something a little different. It is through a document that Intel have released concerning microcode updates for their processors. Now, in this microcode documentation, there are a number of processors that have been listed. And with this, plus some other bits and pieces that we have managed to sift through, what we have now is some specifications of some of the 9000 series processors. Now, I say some because there are a couple of SKUs, unfortunately, which are not present here. The one that's most disappointingly not listed is the uh, 8 core 16 thread CPU, which of course is supposedly going to be the highest end SKU available for the next generation of Intel processors. And even next generation is a bit generous, and we'll get into why in just a moment. But first of all, let's read out the specifications of the processors which do exist. So the highest end SKU is an i5-9600K. It is six cores, six threads, and has a boost frequency of 4.5 gigahertz. We also have the 9600, which is exactly the same, obviously, however, it is locked, but uh, 3.7, sorry, 3.1 gigahertz uh, base clock, 4.5 and boost clock. Next, we have the i5-9400, which is six cores, six threads, 2.9 gigahertz, base 4.1 gigahertz on the turbos. And then we have a couple of i3s. We have the i3-9100, four cores, four threads, 3.7 gigahertz, and then four cores, four threads for the 9000, which is 3.7 gigahertz as well. The uh, 9100 and the 9000 do not have uh, turbo clock speed, so that we that's not listed at all. So what you might notice there is something rather interesting. And that is that we're looking at just a couple of hundred megahertz higher clock speed compared to the 8000 series. So in other words, if we were to take the, let's say 9600K, which is once again, six cores, six threads, identical to the 8600K, whereas we're looking at 4.5 gigahertz for the 9600, uh, the 8600 has just a 4.3 gigahertz. Of course, this does not also mean that overclocking is taken into consideration. So you might ask yourself, well, how do these processors overclock? And that really is the question of the ages. For me, it almost looks like these processors are a little bit like, let's say, the i7-8086K uh, compared to the 8700. In other words, a slightly better bin, slightly higher quality silicon compared to its predecessor. And here's the other thing, despite these processes being called the 9000 series, these are not based on, let's say, Cof on, uh, let's say, Cannon Lake or, let's say, Ice Lake. Instead, you can actually see them listed under the microcode update as Coffee Lake. So this is basically identical silicon. Now, I want to say basically identical and not completely identical because there might be something here or there, a small tweak here or there, a little bit like Zen to Zen Plus. And obviously because these processes have not been released yet, we don't have, let's say if I had an an 80, uh, an 8600 and a 9600K, and I could put them into a motherboard, and I could test them running exactly the same frequency, and the performance and let's say the latency between the caches and all of that stuff was identical, great, we can say that there's no differences, but as it is, we can just presume there are no differences other than perhaps a small clock speed bump. So information, unfortunately, on the six core processors with SMT or hyperthreading, if you prefer, so we can presume that's gonna be called the, what, 9700K. And unfortunately, the uh, eight core 16 thread processor, which is, tentatively known as the 9900K is not yet present. I'm hoping that we see at least a 4.3 or 4.5 gigahertz on that processor. That would just be amazing. In terms of performance, of course, pricing is unknown. Just to remind everyone, despite these processors being uh, listed here, we don't have an exact release date for them, but almost certainly they're gonna appear at the same time as the Z390 chipset. Of course, the Z390 chipset is not exactly anything to be particularly excited about. Instead, the Z390 chipset looks almost like a rebrand of the Z370, but if you do want those additional features, it's going to be down to board manufacturers like Asus, like 
Gigabyte, like MSI or whomever, to actually add those features on using third-party components, which is fine and all. I don't particularly feel that the Z370 chipset is that far uh, behind any particular feature sets right now. I mean, it's it's fine, right? So it's just something to be aware of. So if you are considering purchasing uh, one of the current processors, most likely if you get a really good deal on, let's say, an 8600K or an 8700K, I don't think you're going to be that upset if you purchase this. The only reason I would maybe suggest waiting um, is just if you want that 8-core 16-thread behemoth. But then again, we don't know how well it's going to overclock. So it's possible that these processors may have a couple of extra 100 megahertz in the tank. On average, I'm talking about not if you're running like, you know, liquid nitrogen or something really high end. But let's just say when I'm talking about overclocking, I'm saying something like a standard AIO or a basic water cooling loop or a really good air cooler, which I presume is what most folks are going to be using. So let's say you've got a reasonable AIO you know, you might see an extra 100 or 200 megahertz, hopefully on the core, and that's not just going to be like they both overclock identical because that would kind of suck, at least in my opinion. Now let's move over to another piece of news, and this comes to us from Camp Microsoft via The Verge. So there's been an awful lot of rumors concern concerning the different devices that Microsoft have been working on in the background. And one of those is a new Surface device. Specifically this, however, is going to be a handheld pocketable device. Now, from internal documentation, which is link, uh, leaked, excuse me, it's going to be a disruptive device, whatever that means. And unfortunately, specifications are not exactly a thing at the moment. In other words, there are no specifications, but there are a couple of renders which apparently are very accurate compared to the, the actual final device. The rumored um, device is actually identical to 3D renderings by David Breyer, which, or Breyer, I'm unsure how to pronounce the name, which are available on Twitter. And you can see that while the Surface device looks very standard and mobile and business-like, there are actually a couple of Xbox-like controls there as well. Now, do I feel that this is Project Scarlet in its infancy? Probably not. I don't think that this is a Scarlet device. I could be wrong. Obviously, I'm not working at Redmond. But here's the thing. To me, this is not necessarily exciting because of that. It's instead more of a telltale sign that Microsoft's opinion on gaming and how it's handling gaming is just shifting. And it's also most likely that this device, and I'm guessing here, so I could be totally wrong, this is not part of this rumor, but it's possible that this is also an example of where Microsoft's streaming technology is going to really come to the forefront and how we could see an amalgamation of this type of technology moving forward. It's kind of interesting, right? But not necessarily a confirmation that uh, it will feature this stuff, but it's going to be really cool to me. And I still maintain that there's going to be a family of Xbox Scarlet devices, and I do definitely feel one of those is going to be portable and possibly going to be an amped up steroid version of the surface, of the pocket surface. But as usual, only time will tell. And finally, let's discuss Call of Duty and a job description. Now you may say to yourself, well, why are we having Call of Duty in a job description in the tech video? And that's a good question. Well, it actually comes down to a post on LinkedIn. Specifically, they were looking, that is the studio were looking, uh, that is Infinity Ward, were looking to hire a narrative scripter. Now, the reason this is interesting is a couple of things. First of all, it does hint that a campaign is going to be coming back into the next generation Call of Duty game. But here's where it gets really interesting. It would appear that we are going to be seeing this title aimed to be created for next generation systems that is of course the next generation xbox and the playstation 5 because it says come work with the industry's brightest and new exciting unannounced title for multi next generation platforms we can pretty much say that that is definitely not referring to the playstation 4 or the xbox one or even the xbox one x at this point so obviously this is definitely referring to a next generation system and we can therefore almost certainly presume that this is going to be either 2019 or 2020 at the utmost latest that these next generation systems hit. 
I'm actually really excited at the prospect of it being 2019. I mean, that would be pretty awesome, right? I've got a question for you. Do you think that 2019 is too early for the next generation of systems? Let's say Sony were to say, hey, tomorrow, uh, let's say, you know, early next year, hey, yeah, we're going to be releasing the PS5 this year. So let's say it was holiday 2019. Do you think that's too early or would you prefer it to be a bit later? I'm still of the mindset that I don't necessarily know if Microsoft are going to launch quite that early, given the Xbox One X is not that old. But then they also might not want Sony to have a whole year head start over them. After all, in Microsoft's defense, they kind of got kicked in the shin at the start of this generation. Some of that, of course, really their own fault. Uh, not that I'm blaming anyone of their previous uh, higher-ups or anything. But um, yeah, so they kind of got kicked in the shin by themselves at this generation. So to give Sony essentially a leg up for a year, would they really want to do that? But you can also argue that then they would have the hardware advantage, at least presumably entering the next generation of systems. With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, comment and subscribe. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.